For the following exercises, evaluate the expressions writing the result as a simplified complex number. Okay, so we've done a couple of problems just like these where we're starting to see that we have multiple I values and how to simplify them. If you want the complete rundown, go check out uh, either the last video or the video before this on the complex number playlist. The link is in the description. If you want to check out the playlist, that gives you the full rundown of the I values. Um, for right now, I'm just going to list them out. So we have basically what you have to memorize is that there is an I, right? I to the first and I is any imaginary number. By definition, an I is just the square root of a negative one. Remember that square roots, if you want a real number, uh, you, you always need a positive number under the square root. If you put a negative number in a square root into the calculator, the calculator is going to like explode because it has no idea what you want to do. Those answers are not real. They are imaginary. They, they have I values to them. So just by definition, an I, an imaginary number, is defined as the square root of that negative one. We also went over that I squared, if I had two I's, this turns out to being equal to just a negative one. If you take the square root of negative one and you square it because you have two of them, the square and the square root, the square root and the square, they go bye-bye. So you're just left with negative one. We also saw that I to the third was the same thing as if I took an I squared and multiplied it by an I value. A negative one times an I would be just a negative I. And then I to the fourth would be if I had two I squareds multiplied by each other. So I have a negative one times another negative one, which is just a positive one. These are the four that you have to memorize. Um, and if you want the full rundown, go back to those two previous questions. I got that all for you guys over there, okay? But this is non-negotiable. You need to know your I to the I to the fourth, okay? So now let's get started. Let's do the math and let's do this as a simplified complex number. Now remember, a simplified complex number, you're only allowed one I in your answer. You cannot have I squared. You cannot have I to the third or I to the fourth. You are only allowed just an I. Whether it's positive or negative, that's up to you, or that's up to what the question says. But you can't have like two I squared. You need to simplify that into just the I value. Okay, so I have an I to the seventh and it's being multiplied by this parenthesis. There's two terms inside the parenthesis, so I have to play fair. The i to the seventh would want to be multiplied by the one, but also the i to the seventh wants to be also multiplied by the i uh, squared. So i to the seventh times one would just be i to the seventh, and then now i to the seventh times i to the second, I'm writing this out for you guys over here because I want you to see something. When you have your exponents written like this, this is actually when you add your exponents. So you will not say seven times two, it really is seven plus two. So this is i to the ninth. The difference is, is that if you had i to the seventh and you squared that, then you would multiply these two. So just know the difference. So right now we're dealing with an i uh, plus i to the ninth. Let me just clean that up. And plus because there was a plus here. Okay, we gotta simplify that. Remember, we can't have multiple i's. We only have to have a number and then just one i. So let's simplify i to the seventh first. Now what I like to do is I always like to shoot down to i to the fourth and try to work in terms of i to the fourth, mainly because i to the fourth always equals one. And when you're simplifying and you're multiplying by one, it, it kind of like, you know, just gets crossed off because anything times one is itself. 
So I say to myself, hmm, is there any number multiplied by four that can get me to seven? Not really, right? Because four times one is four. That's fine, right? That means that I only have one four. But then four times two is eight. I can't overshoot my number. It has to be below. But if I say that I have an i to the fourth, how many more numbers do I need? I need three more, right? Because four plus three is seven. So this would be the same thing as i to the fourth times i to the third. Four plus three is seven. This is all being added, right, plus an i to the ninth. So let's try it again. In terms of i to the fourth, can I multiply by any number to get to i to the ninth? I don't know what my dog is doing, so. The bus my, must have, you know, went by my house. Oh well. Okay, so i to the ninth, right? Can I multiply by any number by four to get to nine? Yeah, four times two is eight, right? I can't overshoot it, but I got really close. So how many i to the fourths do I need? I need two of them. So i to the fourth times i to the fourth. That's four plus four, that's uh, eight. And then how many more do I need to get to nine? Oh, I, need, I just need to add one, right? So I just need to multiply again by one more i. And there's my two separations. This is i to the seventh. And this is i to the ninth. Now let's just simplify. i to the fourth, like we said, was one. That's why we love bringing everything to i to the fourth, because technically we could just cancel it out. One times i to the third, and we know that i to the third is a negative one. Oh, sorry, negative i plus, and now let's see here, I have two i to the fourths, they equal one, right? So technically you can just cancel these out because one times one times one times one times one is always just one. So I don't even look at them, but now I just have an i value. So I have to just multiply by i. Okay, one times a negative i is a negative i. So that's this side plus one times one times i is a, it's just an i. So now negative i plus i, oh, they cancel, right? Negative one plus one is zero. And that's my final answer for this one. So all that work for nothing. Yay. <laughs> oh, I crack myself up sometimes. But yeah, this is the answer. It just equals zero. Now let's work on the next one. I have i to the negative third plus five i to the seventh. Okay, so I don't like this and probably you don't either, right? i to the negative third. But just know that any number raised to a negative value, it just equals one over that number to the positive value. So a negative is just signifying that this is really, it should be in the denominator. So I'm just going to rewrite what this really means. And I to the negative three just signifies that this whole thing should be in a denominator. One over I to the third. And that's what we have going on here. So let's just rewrite that. I have one over i to the third plus five. And now wait a minute, we have i to the seventh. Hmm, i to the seventh, we already did that over here, right? i to the seventh, if we just scroll down or you know, look down a little bit, we simplified it into four and three, which was one times negative i, and that equals a negative i. So we already know that an i to the seventh is a negative i value. So I'm just gonna plug that in. So this would be plus five times a negative i. So I'm just gonna clean this up. 
this equals 1 over i cubed plus ne oh, actually negative 5i. Okay, here's another one that we have to simplify, right? What is i cubed? Oh, i cubed is negative i, right? So I can simplify that one. This is just negative i. So I can say 1 over negative i minus 5i. Now, we don't like to have i's in the denominator. Remember, we, we need to get them out of the denominator. So you always multiply by um, the opposite of what's being done here. So instead of being multiplied by a negative i, I'm going to multiply it by a i value. Ooh. There we go. And remember, whatever you do to the denominator, you have to do to the numerator. So I'm going to multiply this numerator by i as well. And I'm just going to simplify this component. Because this way, whenever you multiply by the opposite, you will always get the i out of the denominator. So let's see. i times 1 is a i divided by i times negative i is a negative i squared. I picked up two i's. And remember, i squared by our little chart over here, this just equals negative 1. So this would be i over negative times a negative 1 because there was a negative here. So this is just i over 1. Negative times negative is a positive, so i over 1, which, which is just i. So now I know that this whole thing simplifies to just an i value. And now I can do my math. I have an i value minus 5i, because I still have to minus 5i. i minus 5i, there's 1 over here, so 1 minus 5 is a negative 4i. And now it's finally in simplified complex form notation. And that's it, guys. What do you guys think? Remember, though, you have to memorize this unless your teacher or professor gives it to you, but I highly doubt it, all right? So just memorize it. It's a really good thing to just know, you know. All right, so what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Give this video a thumbs up if it helped you out in your class. And, you know, subscribe to the channel if you'd like to. But if not, that's okay, too. Um, we'll keep working hard, all right? So... Keep studying hard. You guys got this. Math is fun, 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 fun. And I'm here with you every step of the way. So I will see you guys all in the next lesson. Bye-bye.